an umbrella business organization founded by some of the most prominent and philanthropic members of the Bangladeshi community, including the chairman, Iqbal Ahmed OBE, and President Bajlor Rashid MBE. The UK BCCI brings their knowledge and experience together to benefit the business community. The organization seeks to inspire entrepreneurs and businesses by offering advice, signposting, training, and networking through seminars. These are addressed and attended by key government ministers, departments, organizations, various chains of commerce, and personnel from both the UK and Bangladesh. There are also roadshows, direct business-to-business -business links, programs, and projects. Now, these not only build up confidence in new and existing businesses supported by UK BCCI, but they also connect with them both in the UK and Bangladesh.
is uh, going to donate all their funds to the Rohingya appeal. So can I just say thank you? And it's very important, time and time again, we have said never, never, and yet again we have 500,000 people on the borders of Bangladesh. I was a young child when many of my families flee, flew to India to seek refuge, and I know how painful that must be. So I'm really delighted that you're taking the step, Anne and Paul, and we should do everything we can. And of course, an absolute warm congratulation to Bangladesh government for doing what it's doing. It's been truly inspirational in the leadership that it's provided. And that's the name of the winner of the Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award, and that is Arzaz Chowdhury. It's a real pleasure to be here this evening and to see you all. Um, I just wanted to echo the words of Admain and Paul Scully, two concerned MPs who have recently been out to Bangladesh and seen the plight of the Rohingya. Uh, this is an incredibly distressing situation. It's one close to all of our hearts. It's one that I've spoken to our Foreign Secretary, Boris Johnson, personally about. We all need to do everything we can to bring maximum pressure onto the Burmese government and to also unite in our solidarity against what is happening but also give generously to the various charitable appeals. There's a reason why I'm going to explain this. I was actually born during the Second World War. I'm actually a lot older than I look. Um, and the reason for mentioning this is that the world has changed so much since I grew up. For the better, in most cases. And when I started in black and white television, there was only BBC and ITV. One of the biggest changes is the contribution that people coming in, their, their parents and their grandparents from overseas. And I just want to pay tribute to the fantastic job and the great contribution you guys have made to this country. Bangladesh has been terrific for the UK and thank you very much indeed. And I said, look, I'll come and hold your hand. She wasn't expecting this, so I know we'll have the best of all. Do you want me to ask you a few questions? Would that be easier for you? Is that right, Jenny? Off you go. Right. I've interviewed Alex Ferguson, Chris Hugh Douglas. Yes. So this is going to be easy. So what would you, what's your reaction? I know you're terrified, but don't be, these are all friends in here. What's your reaction to winning this? Nice and close. I'd just like to say thank you to the UK BCCI to having such a great platform for people like myself to shine and inspire others. It's been an incredible journey. It's been a challenging journey, but I'm a strong believer of it's not how many times you get knocked down, but how many times you can pick yourself back up. To raise awareness and to support the plight of the people who are suffering in Myanmar and in Bangladesh, the Rohingya population. And I hope that you will donate generously, many of you already are, to the Disaster Emergency Committee appeal because over a million people have been, almost a million people have been displaced. And we have seen uh, what the UN has described as a textbook example of ethnic cleansing taking place. And I'm grateful to my colleagues in the Conservative and Lib, Dem, uh, Lib Dems and other parties in their support for the debate we will have on Tuesday. Please encourage your members of Parliament to take part in this debate. We have to continue to make sure this issue is not forgotten about and the suffering of the people of uh, the Rohingya population is not forgotten about. Thank you again for your support. Slavik. Courage, but that's the character that I don't have. And he said he would not leave or abandon his friends unless they were permitted to go, he would not. He paid the price. It's tragedy, at the same time, a great pride. To me, what was important and for the nation, and this is important, I mentioned this, that it turned out to be a watershed for Bangladesh in recognizing and dealing with terrorism, 
head on. It is since that day, and I'm very happy to say that the government has gone after in the most effective and serious manner to uh, fight terrorism with a zero tolerance and with a great amount of success. It is not the end of the story. We as a country are continuing to fight this scourge and I believe that we will succeed. So, on a personal level, if you permit me, I accept this very humbly, but I would also like to dedicate this to the memory of my grandson, Faraz Ayaz Hussain. So, is for this Bangladesh. He demonstrated what is Islam in the real sense of the term, and not what these terrorists have done and spoiled the name of Muslims and Islam across the world. Bangladesh stands for tolerant, inclusive society, and we will continue our journey and fight to achieve this. And I just want to say, I am hugely impressed with the Bangladesh business community.